Hi, my name is Karen Ng, and I'm a Group Program Manager on the Visual Studio Cloud Services team. Today, I'm going to talk to you about dashboards. It's a brand new feature that we just shipped in Visual Studio Team Services and Team Foundation Server Update 1. So what I'll show you today is really what dashboards are. I'll show you what's new. Um, dashboards are a customizable canvas that replace your team overview page that allow you to visualize the progress and status across your team project. I'll show you the capability to do multiple dashboards. So in the previous home page, you really could only have one. You could only have a small section to pin new widgets, and you couldn't customize anything else on that page. In the new dashboards, you can have multiple dashboards, one for your sprint overview, one for your shipping features, one for your code health, one for your active bugs, anything you can imagine. The next thing I'll show you is having a customizable canvas. Previously, you couldn't remove any of those widgets, and you couldn't lay it out the way your team wanted to. What we've done is we've made every single widget on that board 100% customizable. So what you can do now is remove, add, or configure any widget the way you want. The last thing I'll show you is a new set of widget capabilities that we've introduced to the board and into the catalog. A couple of those as teasers are a query tile that lets you turn red or green depending on the threshold of bugs, or even a sprint overview widget that shows you your stories that are in progress. So before we dive in, let me show you what you used to have. So this used to be the old team overview page inside Visual Studio Team Services. There were a couple things that you couldn't do this page. You couldn't remove the top blocks if you didn't want them there, or if you, your team didn't use sprint burndowns or capacity, there is no way to remove them, and now you can. This is just a sneak peek at what the new dashboards look like. If you're a team admin on the page, you'll start to see that there's a green plus button. That plus button allows you to add multiple dashboards. Another thing you'll see is if you hover over any widget, you can start laying them out the way you want, or you can configure them to show the data you want. The last thing I'll show you is these new widgets. So three of them are shown here. One of them is a markdown widget, and it really lets you be creative with what you want to show with your team, text, images, or links. The other one is the sprint overview widget, and it allows you to see stories that are in progress and which ones haven't started yet. The last one I'm showing you here in green is the query tile, and it triggers green because there are no block tasks on this board. Great. Let's start and show you the demo now. So here we are at the default dashboard that you have when you create a new project. There's a few things that you can start seeing on the dashboard. First, there's kind of a welcome widget. It shows you a tour across our product. There's a query results widget that actually is bound to the open user stories. There's a work widget that are your quick shortcuts to the different work hubs within the product. You can quickly get to Visual Studio, your team members, open user stories, create a new bug or user story directly from the dashboard or your sprint burndown. By default, when you create a new project, this is what you get. Let me show you what it looks like to build a new dashboard. So let's create a new dashboard called Sprint Overview. Okay. What that does is it creates a new dashboard that's really a blank canvas for us. The first thing I want to do is go to the widget catalog. I can see a number of widgets in the catalog. Here's one that looks interesting. I'm going to create a sprint overview widget that's already bound to my sprint. I can see that I have 11 workdays remaining, and about 33% of my stories are complete. The next widget I want to add is a markdown widget. I want to tell other people what this team is about. So let's go for the markdown widget. Let's go ahead and add it. And now I'm going to go ahead and configure it. So by default, every configuration of the widget shows you a live preview of what you'll see. We have some markdown text here, and if you're not familiar with markdown, you can learn more about the markdown syntax. I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of different things. So in this team, this doesn't quite fit in that widget view. I'm gonna make it a two by three widget. You can start seeing things like upcoming links, links to wikis, and even including images. Let me go ahead and save that. Let's add a few more widgets together at the same time. So the code tile looks interesting. The new work item widgets, let's do query results and a query tile. Um, let's go ahead and add a burn down as well. I'm gonna add all those widgets at once. So you can see that the burn down is already configured because my sprint is configured. For the code tile, let me configure this to be bound to my master branch. What it shows me is the number of commits in the last seven days. I'll bind my query results widget to something else. So if I go into my shared queries, look into my current iteration, I want this to look at active tasks. 
What I want here is I really just want the ID and the title. So I'll go ahead and configure those columns to show what I need. The last thing I'll configure here is the query tile. I want the query tile to show my active bugs. So if my active bugs are less than 10, I want it to highlight green. Let me actually go ahead and add in one more query tile widget. Let's add the resolve bugs here. So if my query tile shows my resolve bugs, and if those bugs are greater than zero, since I don't want to hold any debt, it actually triggers red. And now what I can do is just lay out my, my dashboard. Let me make my markdown widget here, since I'm explaining what my team does. I'll do my iteration and burn down. Let me grab my code tile, move it down to the bottom. I want my active bugs here, Let me trade the order here, and my resolve bugs. Now what I want to show you is how to add charts. I want to go into my build hub, and I really want to get a rolling history of the builds. I can go ahead and see my CI build here. I get a new option to add that to my dashboard. I'm going to add that to my sprint overview. If I go back to my dashboard, you can see that the CI build is now available, and I'll drag it here, and I can see that I've had two build failures in the last set of builds. The last thing I'll do is go to the work hub. What I want to do is I want to make a chart that shows bugs assigned to users on my team. I'm going to go ahead and create a new chart. I went to the queries hub, then the charts hub, and now what I'm going to do is select one of the shared queries. What I want to do is active bugs, and I want to create a new chart. So the pie chart feels like the right one that I want to use, and I want to see all the active bugs assigned to people on my team. I can go ahead and make the colors really customized to what I want it to be. And I like this set, and I'll go ahead and create that new chart. The last thing I'll do is I want to add this chart to my dashboard. And if I go back to my dashboard, I now really have a beautiful sprint overview dashboard that lets me quickly see where I am in the sprint, how many active bugs I have, what my build history looked like, and even the commits in the last code branch. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw in the demo. Go ahead and try it out. If you're curious about more, every three weeks, we actually publish new features to Visual Studio Team Services. You can find those features on visualstudio.com under the News section. So keep up to date with dashboards and widgets. Um, if you have any feedback or you love what you're seeing, feel free to reach out to me at Twitter at Karen K. Liu. I love to hear it. Thanks for joining today.